Core Losers, welcome to CNN 10. It's the first Friday, awesome, in March, and we are spending part of it in the land of fire and ice. The European nation of Iceland is called that because it's home to both volcanoes and glaciers, and meteorologists say there are signs that a volcanic eruption is brewing. Southwestern Iceland has seen 17,000 earthquakes over the past week, according to the Icelandic Meteorological Office. Sound like a lot? It is a lot. One resident told CNN that it's very unusual to feel the earth shake 24 hours a day for a whole week. The largest of these tremors had a magnitude of 5.6. That's considered a moderate quake, depending on how deep it is. There have been some small cracks in the roads and rock falls where the ground is steeper. But aside from that, not a lot of damage has been reported. The tremors seem to calm down from Wednesday to Thursday, but a government official doesn't think the seismic activity is over. And while scientists don't know exactly what's caused this swarm of quakes, a University of Iceland volcanology professor thinks they might be because there's been a, quote, intrusion of magma into the Earth's crust in southwest Iceland. This is where several volcanoes are located, and it's especially concerning because two-thirds of the country's population lives in the southwestern part of the island. University computer models predict that if there's an eruption, the resulting lava flows probably won't impact any nearby towns or the region's international airport. But again, that's only based on models. All this has triggered a range of reactions from people there, from anxiety to excitement, and cameras have been put on standby to live stream an eruption should one take place. Number one, an earthquake occurs when two blocks of the earth slip past each other. Now for most of the time, those blocks are together with friction, but they are building up energy because they are moving in different directions. When one block decides to slip, all of a sudden that energy is released by seismic waves, kind of like ripples on a pond, creating the earthquake. Number two, an earthquake can occur very near the surface of the earth. Those earthquakes are typically very destructive, or as deep as 400 miles down into the crust. Now, where the shaking actually happens, that's called the hypocenter. But directly above it on the surface, that's called the epicenter. Number three, the power of an earthquake is called magnitude. Now, the intensity of the shaking can vary depending on the geography, the topography, or even the depth of the quake. Now, the USGS says there are 500,000 detectable quakes every year. 100,000 can be felt, and 100 will create damage. Number four, earthquakes themselves actually don't kill that many people. It's the natural and man-made structures that fall to the ground during the shaking that injure and kill. Number five, the majority of all earthquakes and volcanoes happen along plate boundaries. The largest is the Pacific Plate and its series of boundaries all along the Pacific Ocean, known as the Ring of Fire. God, it just blew up. It just blew up. It just blew up. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> What historic figure proposed an alternative English alphabet in 1779? Johannes Gutenberg, Benjamin Franklin, Maria Montessori, or Anne Sullivan? This was Ben Franklin's idea, and while it didn't take off, another one he had about time changes did. 
So why don't we change the clocks ahead one hour in the spring and back one hour in the fall? Well, it's actually to reduce the electricity consumption by extending the daylight hours. In the U.S., we change our clocks at 2 a.m. on the second Sunday in March. That begins daylight saving time. That's when we spring ahead. On the first Sunday in November, we change our clocks at 2 a.m. again. That's actually just going back to standard time. Believe it or not, this started with an idea from Benjamin Franklin. Franklin did write an essay suggesting that people could use less candles if they got up early and made better use of daylight. In 1918, the Standard Time Act established time zones and daylight saving time, but not all states participate. To this day, most of Arizona and all of Hawaii do not change their clocks. Over 70 countries across the world observe daylight saving time, with notable exceptions of China and Japan. In 2007, we actually changed the date of when we set our clocks back an hour to the first week in November. This helped protect trick-or-treaters by giving them an extra hour of daylight. One of the other lines of thinking was that we would have a better voter turnout on election years. Experts say each time you change your clocks, it's always a good idea to change those batteries in your smoke detector and always look forward to fall when you get that extra hour of sleep. Unless, as you just heard, you live in Arizona, Hawaii, or possibly Georgia, the state Senate there just passed a bill that would end its observance of time changes. Now it's up to Georgia's House of Representatives and its governor to decide if and when Georgia will do this. Those who want to end the time changes say they're bad for our health, that they disrupt our sleep cycles and cause a number of other health problems. Those who want to keep the time changes support the later daylight hours in the summer and say that falling back in autumn keeps the time of sunrise closer to the time when people wake up. A couple other states have grappled with proposals concerning seasonal time changes, but even among those who want to eliminate them, there's still a debate over when to do it. Does their state stay on standard time year-round, or does it opt for daylight saving time year-round? That's what Georgia's government is trying to determine right now. And as far as the future of all of this goes, well, only time will tell. While we're on the subject of time, if you want to have a lot of it, doctors say staying active is key. It improves your balance and brain health. It helps ward off diseases. A crossing guard in South Carolina has found a way to follow this advice and keep working well into her 90s. In the middle, I let them out. And I stopped this traffic, and I stopped this, and let the school traffic out. Simple. At the young age of 94, just six years short of a century. You said everybody listens to you. They listen. Nobody pushing you over because you're 94. No. Miss Estella Williams starts and ends every day right here in the center lane of the 28 bypass, just outside of Westside High School. It's good. I enjoy doing it. At the reins of controlling the people at the wheel, this all started as a temporary gig. My son-in-law, he was a policeman there, and he needed somebody, and he asked me if I'd help him a few days. That few days was 25 years ago. She's been stop sign in hand since. Oh yeah, oh yeah, so I don't let nobody stay too long, so I try to keep it going. No signs of slowing down. Easy, stop the car, tell the children to come up. And no signs of aging. Yeah, I keep the kids safe. And the people. She's not planning on leaving that center lane anytime soon. Maybe I'll give it another year or so. <laughs> <laughs> Just treat everybody right. That's my motto. Will she ever stop and go do something else? Why cross that bridge? She's keeping things in motion, minding her busness, helping people cross while never being crossed. All in all, she's doing a guard job one step at a time of helping people from all walks of life stay off the street. I'm Carl Azus, and Fridays are Austin? They are at Austin High School. It's located in the town of Austin, Indiana. Thank you for subscribing and commenting on our YouTube channel. We hope everyone watching has a great weekend ahead from all of us here at CNN.